Ooh, today's going to be a moving experience. <laughs> Come on guys, have some fun. Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another beautiful day here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Today is gonna be running and gunning. So today we're gonna be knocking out chores. I didn't have really a total purpose for the video today other than to take you guys along with me as I complete different tasks. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the Kubota X1140 over to the other side of the farm and we're gonna move the cows onto a new section of pasture and we're gonna fill up the water tanks. Then we're gonna hop on Skiddy Bop, our little John Deere skid steer, and we're gonna fix up the mess in the driveway down here. So uh, we had a new gate put in and I've got a mess to clean up. So I'm gonna start working with that. Then we're gonna take Skiddy Bop up the top of the hill and we're going to load dump truck loads of dirt from our garden. We didn't get that task finished the other day before it rained. It's gonna rain this evening. Cross your fingers, we get all of our chores done. There's more chores than that. We have to lubricate the Ventrac. We've got to hook up the uh, Ventrac mower. We've got to replace the tires on it. We have to go down here and start mowing. There's just a ton of chores to get done. So come along today as we have a true farm vlog. You'll get to see my daily routine here on the farm. All right, woo! I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life. Times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. That's right. What you don't realize is there's a lot of just general summertime maintenance stuff to get done here on the farm. And what we're gonna do is drive, we've left the house, we're gonna drive out the gate, and I'm gonna turn the camera around, you can really see the mess that I've gotta fix up with the skid loader. So there's a sensor in the ground that I'm running over and the gate will open very shortly. You can see it's starting to wash a little bit, and I've got little piles of dirt and stuff to get up. This is our new gate, it's an automatic gate. Thank you guys for coming in. There's the post office lady. Hopefully she's not bringing chickens. Cruise on over the other side of the farm. So what you guys don't often get a taste of is the real experience here on the farm, the real day-to-day -day life on the farm. The cows are over here in this section of pasture and I'm moving them every single day. We're gonna hop out of the Kubota. That thing is loud, man. I almost need to wear earplugs running that. So the cows <laughs> are mooing because they wanna be moved. <laughs> so we go down here. Um, and these are our water tanks. These water tanks, eh, they're not quite empty yet. So what we do is we'll wait until the cows completely empty that tank. I'm gonna go ahead and move this one on this side of the fence. And you can see this is grazed. This has not been grazed. It's an acre and a half there and an acre and a half right there. We've been intensively mob grazing our cows thanks to this ABI water tank. It's been awesome. Thousand gallons of potable, portable water that we're pulling with our TYM T1104 right here. So we may end up just knocking on it right here. I think we've got enough water for the day today, but gosh, they sure are loud, aren't they? <laughs> so we may end up taking the tractor down to the creek and pumping some more water before this rainstorm we get tonight because it gets muddy when it rains here. So we're not quite ready for the move, although the cows are sounding like they're ready. They need to drink that water tank down a little bit more so that I can move it, and then I'll release them over into this pasture. So we're coming back over here. Let's go get on the Skiddy Bop skid steer. Before we jump on the skid steer, I'm gonna run over and make sure we don't have any new babies. A lot of times I'll do this uh, cattle check with the drone, but today <laughs> we're over here, so I might as well do it. This is electrified. It will shock the ever-loving snot out of you, and the cows really respect it. What I do is I pull one post, one step-in post, I take it off the wire, and I push it down. If it's just me here, that's what I'll do. If Mrs. Stony Ridge is with me, she'll just step on the wire, and then I'll drive right over top of it. Pretty cool, pretty simple, and the cows are bawling at me. They'll probably follow me over here. Typically, if we're gonna have a calf, it'll be out in the middle of this field in this tall broom grass or broom straw.
No new calves today, but there are two of our calves that were born about a week ago, something like that. Man, they're playful, they're fun little critters. So we're back to the skid steer. This is our John Deere 250 skid steer. Now, you might be wondering what the heck this hay bale is doing sitting here out in the middle of nowhere. What we're gonna do is hook this hay bale to the ATV and we're gonna roll it out on these bare spots. So we've got a few bare spots going on all the way down through here. And we're gonna use some of that hay on top of this bare ground where we just put this gate system in. We had to dig trenches all over everywhere. I was dying when we were building that thing. I was like, oh, I worked on this driveway so hard. So what we're gonna do with the skid steer right now is fix up the mess that's down there and then we'll bring the Ventrac with the rake uh, attachment on the front of it and we'll dress it all up nice. Let's get busy. Next project, take that skid steer, put this pile of dirt in that truck and move it down to the garden site. Some of this dirt, I say dirt, this is soil. This is soil that I built for a garden plot that used to be right here. We're actually gonna be putting a huge shop right here. About a 60 by 200 shop is gonna go right here for me to keep my equipment in out of the rain and for us to work on projects together. So please pound that like button, jump in, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you back. This is my neighbor's rusty crusty dump truck. It's not really rusty. Uh, it's an old Ford F-350 with that old non-turbo 7.3 diesel. It's a little bit of a bear to get started sometimes. So we're gonna make sure it's gonna start and then we're gonna load it up. Last time I talked about this crusty old truck, everybody said, oh, you're talking about your neighbor's truck all bad. It's not his wife, <laughs> it's his truck, man. He knows it's crusty, he knows it's an old dump truck and it gets used for this kind of stuff. Hauling firewood, hauling slabs. And by the way, we're gonna have to load up all the slabs that we have in trade for using this dump truck. So we're gonna load up the slabs too off of the sawmill, put them in the back of this and take it up to him later today. Whew, what a job. Here it goes. <laughs> now this truck doesn't have a parking brake, so this is my parking brake.
Guys, we got it all smoothed out. We'll bring the Ventrac rake up here and smooth this just a little bit more. You can see what I'm doing here, the grand plan. We're gonna be graveling or rocking this entire area. So all of this, everything you see here, all the way back to the fence line. All of this is gonna be in gravel right here. So it's gonna be a huge equipment lot for all of our farm equipment and all the stuff that we have here on the farm. Trucks, tractors, toys, all kinds of fun stuff. So that's what's going on. I could not waste this good dirt. This is absolutely awesome dirt. Uh, let's see if we can pull out earthworms here. Man, I, I was just watching. The more I dug, the more earthworms I saw. I don't see any here because this is kind of the edge. But man, there was just worms everywhere. There's probably worms everywhere down here. This was good soil that we put amendments in. So we put compost, manure, rock dust, all kinds of different amendments in it, and then we had to move it. <laughs> Not the grand plan. Uh, that's why you really have to plan out your farm. Let's go down here, we'll dump this last load, and we'll grab the Ventrac, lubricate it, and get busy on that. Woo! Cousin Vic, if you're watching this, thanks for letting me use your dump truck, man. This thing has been a lifesaver. It would have took me forever to haul loads back and forth back and forth so thanks bud appreciate it there's that worm i was talking about that's almost 100 percent worm casting man garden's gonna be a rock star this year. So we gotta take Humpty Dumpty back to Cousin Vic's house and then walk back down. So there's a, about a eh, quarter mile walk ahead of me. Not bad. So we're all ready for the Ventrac service. And this is the intermittent service. In other words, this is the 50 hour service. The 100 hour service is the oil change, hydraulic fluid and all that stuff. And it's pretty cool, man. This is an awesome little tractor. Uh, 25 horsepower Kubota or 24.8 horsepower Kubota diesel engine. And if we pop the hood here, hey doggies. <laughs> it's got a quick reference guide on the back of the hood right there that'll tell you everything you need to do. So pretty neat. 11 lubrication points on this thing, plus four more lubrication points for the three point arm. So we're gonna go ahead and grease everything up. Before we do that, let's hop back on the Kubota and go move the cows. How about a quick pit stop to water the chickens? It looks like they're just about completely out of water. Might as well. So many chores on the farm every day. It's just a daily routine, I guess, of probably three hours of just maintenance every day. So we water our chickens with rainwater. Let me show you how we do that. It's very, very simple. We have <laughs> what we call a West Virginia carport right there. And all I do is put my bucket right here underneath where the West Virginia carport drips off in the bucket. And that's how we use rainwater to keep the chickens watered so we don't have to carry buckets from the house. That's the Swamp Donkey C10 pickup. You'll see that in future videos. <laughs> all right guys, we're getting ready to open up and let the cows into this new section of pasture. You can see from the drone footage, there's just a distinct line, brown versus green. We're getting ready to get into the spring flush here and the grass will really start growing vigorously, okay? So what we're doing is some early stimulation right now and we're rotating the cows just about every single day. This is about a acre and a half, closer to two acres, maybe closer to three acre little section right here with a lot of grass on it. So we may keep them here for two days. These 30 cows will drink 300 gallons per day. That water tank, the ABI water tank, is a thousand gallon water tank so what we do is we drive down to the creek water is gold when you're picking it up and moving it on a trailer so you want to utilize all the water you possibly can that's why we waited until they were really low so there's only about that much water in the bottom of the tank they're not out of water they're not dying of thirst and you'll see they'll go nuts on this pasture it's awesome this is really fun
That's not fun. So all we do is hook this right back over our post and we are ready to rock and roll. That is energized as soon as I turn the power on. But the cows are so used to this poly braid that they respond to it whether it has power on it or not. I could probably just use a piece of string at this point. This is a psychological barrier more than a physical barrier. So they respect that fence. Each one of those cows has had its turn learning the electric fence, whether it knocked a snot out of them or whether it gave them a little zip. But I've been shocked by it. It's not that bad, but it's enough to make you not want to touch it. I don't want to touch it. They don't want to touch it. And therefore, they stay in these paddocks. Green, not so green. The rain tonight is going to make this explode with growth. It's super fun. Now we'll take our ABI water trailer and we'll just let gravity do all the work. We'll toss this over in the water tank. That's it. No electricity, no power needed. We're gonna keep an eye. We're gonna look over inside this tank and see how much water's in it. If it's running the least bit low, we're going to the creek together. Oh, three quarters full. Awesome. That means we got three more days. This tank is black, but evidently it's double walled. In other words, it's so thick that the water in the inside of it does not get hot because it's black. Just so you guys know. So it's nice and cool. It's about yeah, 60 degrees of water inside here. Cows are moved, water tanks are full. Back to the projects. Long day. Woo. Now for the ever so divine, or dare I say evil, lubrication of the Ventrac. Every grease fitting is super easy to get to with the exception of two. Two grease fittings on the drive shaft that go from the engine to the hydraulic pump back here. And man, they're a booger to get to. So we gotta take a couple guards off and we gotta do a little lubrication with some grease. Guys, do yourself a favor and get yourself a nice grease gun like this. This is a McNaught grease gun. I'll post a link down in the video description. It is absolutely awesome. It has this quick connect, McNaught quick connect system on here. So you know you're on your grease fitting. It locks into place. Very, very cool. That you can get separate from this, but get yourself a good grease gun. These things are super awesome. Very handy. Guys, the nicest grease gun in the world isn't gonna do you one bit of good if you don't have any grease. So, <laughs> we're headed off to the tractor supply to get some grease. I ran through an entire case of grease, evidently, so I must be doing a good job. That's all right, because we need to pick up some shavings for our tartar farm and ranch. 100 gallon stock tank, we have 90 chicks coming tomorrow. That'll be 50 meat birds and 40 layers, I do believe. Or maybe it's the opposite, I'm not sure. They're coming from Murray McMurray Hatchery. So, we'll see you guys when we get back from the tractor supply. All right, we're back from tractor supply, look at this. Man, that uh, it's a U-joint in the center of this machine that is such a booger to get to, man. It is just a straight up booger. Once you get it on there, you're good to go. What you have to have is uh, an, ex an elbow extension to go on your uh, grease gun. And I've got one, but man, <laughs> it's a fussy little booger. You gotta have it just in the right position. So we're about to button everything up here and it all looks great. Pretty happy with the results of what I got going. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take the landscape rake. And we're gonna go down here and we're gonna clean up some areas with the landscape rake. That thing does an awesome job. This is a landscape rake. It just basically is a landscaper's dream, man. It does a great job on gravel. It does a great job on pretty much anything you put it to. Dirt, gravel, uh, debris, rocks, everything. So these are the little hex head screws that like to come loose. Uh, <laughs> they don't like to come loose. They like to get lost. So if you buy a Ventrac, 
buy extra nuts and bolts because you're gonna lose some. You're gonna drop some and you're gonna be like, where in the world is that? You'll be searching all day at the hardware store. So go on and buy some extras. That's my advice to anybody who wants a Ventrac. I love the Ventrac tractor. It's been absolutely great. We've got about 300 hours on this thing and had the only hiccup was a fuel problem. And that was my problem. And we solved that by buying a new fuel tank. So we're bringing the Ventrac down here to address this issue. There is a high spot, there are low spots, and all this area right here used to be kind of a flower bed. There were two poplar trees right here and they were blocking the view of the rest of the farm. So we took them out and then we put them on the sawmill. What we have here is three dump truck loads of good garden soil and I'm gonna spread this all out. I've already spread it out a little bit with the bucket on the uh, skid steer but I'm gonna take that landscape rake with a Ventrac and this is gonna look awesome, just wait. So now that we've gotten the area almost leveled off, we're gonna go put the wheels on the front of this landscape rake and that's gonna turn it into a grader and it's gonna grade it out smooth. We'll also use the wheels on the landscape rake on the driveway down there and that'll make that smooth. So that's kind of <laughs> how it all goes. I'm gonna run and grab the wheels real quick and I'm gonna zip around this a couple more times. You'll see the results, they are fantastic. I am racing the rain and racing daylight. Uh, this has been uh, eight hours with me here on the Stony Ridge farm. Had we not had to run to tractor supply, we'd probably get it all done today. I don't know. Let's see what we got. It's a long day on the Stony Ridge farm and take a look at this. Look how nice it made it. It went from <laughs> a rutted up garden area to a putting green pretty much, man. That looks awesome. Guys, that's what went on today here on the Stony Ridge farm. I appreciate you. The reason we didn't use Big T, the Big TYM tractor over there, the T1104 and the uh, TR3 rake is because it's so heavy. So this is wet ground. This thing treads really, really lightly on wet ground. This is all the debris that came out of there. So I'll get myself a bucket or bring the skid steer down and just rake that into the bucket and that'll be it. Down at the driveway, everything smoothed out. Everything looks absolutely gorgeous and nice. We had a very productive day together. Thanks a lot for joining me on the Stony Ridge. I'll see you next time. Pound the like button. It's time for me to do the Wednesday night live stream. See y'all later. Yeah, Woo! Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and 